going to jump right in with how to draw a cube in one point perspective. We could draw a cube that's solid. Instead, I'm going to do what's a little bit more difficult for you guys, and we're going to do a cube that's transparent so that you can see the extra additional steps in order to do that. So let's look on the page. The first step that we're going to do is we want to draw our horizon line. For this cube, I'm going to be drawing a bird's eye view, so I'm going to put my horizon line up at the top of the page. And I want to make sure that my horizon line is nice and horizontal. If you need to measure a couple of um, sections so that you can get that horizontal, do that. If not, you can go ahead and just draw it in. Um, I'm actually going to do it a little bit darker for you guys so that you can see it, because I know that sometimes getting these pencils to show up on the camera. It's not always the easiest task. OK, so this is my horizon line. You can put your cube anywhere on the page below the horizon line. You could put it on the horizon line or above. We don't really have that much room to put it above. So I'm going to put it below. And it can move anywhere from side to side and anywhere from top to bottom. The way that I'm going to start drawing this is that I'm first going to draw a square. And you want to think of this like this is the front of the cube. The more perfectionist you can be about getting these angles to be right angles, the better your cube is going to look in the end. So I'm going to do the best that I can here. Normally when I'm at my home studio, I like to lean right over my page. And you can see that when I'm filming, if I were to do that right now, all you guys would be able to see is the top of my head. It's not very effective. <clears throat> OK, so here. I have the front side of my cube drawn with a square. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a direction that I want to be able to see the cube from. So imagine if I'm looking at the front face of this cube right here, and I want to see a little bit of the back side. I'm sorry, the, <clears throat> the left side. I'm going to put lines going this way so that you can see the side of the cube. The way that I'm going to do that is to draw in what's called the vanishing point. Now, your vanishing point has to exist on the horizon line. And it can exist anywhere on the horizon line. There are going to be other videos about this so that you can really understand how those things move together. My vanishing point could be anywhere along this horizon line. It's just going to change the way that I see the view of this cube. And I'm going to write that on there for you so that you know this is my vanishing point. One thing that's really important you'll notice is that I drew it with my ruler and I made it an X. If I draw my vanishing point with a dot, I can wind up putting lines through the vanishing point going to my cube on this side or on this side. And they're actually different points on the horizon line. When I draw my vanishing point like it's an X, I'm going to make sure that I connect on the horizon line right at that intersection of the X and the horizon line so that I'm really trying to connect to one point only. The next thing I'm going to do is that my lines from the front of my square, the front of my cube, are going to connect to each, <clears throat> each corner and to the vanishing point. Another really helpful tip you can see is that I placed my pencil here on the corner, and then I slid my ruler over to meet it. That accounts for the width of my pencil so that I know that I'm really going to connect from that exact corner to the vanishing point. I'm going to do the same down here. And then the same up here. And you'll see, once I get this third line in, every once in a while I'm going to have to lean over and you'll see the top of my head, just so that I can make sure I'm drawing correctly. <clears throat> once I get this drawn, you can see that this looks like the top plane that's moving back in space forever and the side plane that's moving back in space, this would be the way to communicate a solid cube like this, the front plane, the side plane, and the top plane. <clears throat> Instead, to make it a transparent cube, I'm going to put in this fourth line. And to show that it's transparent, I'm going to do this as a dashed line. So you'll see that it's behind the other lines. Now, coincidentally, two of my lines are lining up here. You can see that this bottom line is almost in line with this top corner line. 
those are different lines though. This is this line right here is the dashed line and this line right here is the top line. So now what I have is I have a cube that's going on in space forever. It ends only when the curvature of the Earth kind of curves back around. You can't see anything else. <clears throat> so what we need to do is we need to figure out where to end this cube. Now this is usually where smart people say, well, this was a two inch line. This is a two inch square. I'm gonna make it a cube so that I'm gonna measure two inches back in space. But this is where our first rule of perspective comes into play. If I were to measure two inches back and draw on my back line here, do you see how this would make a long rectangular side? You can't measure the same distance here and then show that as the depth because the first rule of perspective is that as things move back in space, they appear smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up my ruler with the front line right here and I'm gonna use my ruler as my fourth line of this top wall here. And I'm gonna slide it back in space until it looks too long. And I can see that this looks really like a long rectangle. Here, it's a little bit too narrow. That looks like a little sliver of a box. So it needs to be somewhere in between. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. The most important thing is that this line needs to be horizontal and parallel to this front line. So there's my first top plane defined. Now I'm gonna define the side plane. I'm gonna line up my ruler with this vertical line and then I'm gonna slide it back until I see this intersection right here. I wanna make sure that this line is perfectly vertical. It's very easy for those lines to go astray. Oftentimes what I see is this where it's sort of <clears throat> moving away from this front vertical line. Instead, you want to make sure that this line is perfectly parallel to this line and it's going from this intersection down to your next diagonal. Then I'm going to sort of think of it like it's a string. I'm going to tie the end of the box closed. And it would be tempting to put your ruler in like this, but you see how that covers up the line underneath? My ruler, I have a see-through ruler, so <clears throat> you can actually see it, but if you were to have a solid metal ruler or a wood ruler, you wouldn't be able to see it. Instead, what you would want to do is use the bottom edge of your ruler and treat this line like it's the fourth wall of this plane. And you can see that now this line is parallel to the front line. If it gets crooked, it's going to look really funny and everything's going to be thrown off in the end. And actually, you know what? Let me draw this one dash too. I almost started to put it in there solid, but let's dash this one so that you can see that it's also a transparent edge. <clears throat> it's behind the front of our cube. And now these two, you wanna connect directly. This last line, there's nothing you can do about it. I would say about two out of three times, there's human error and those two lines are not perfectly in line with each other or those two intersections. So you can see right now, if I line up with this corner, do you see how this is a little bit off right here? It's lined up perfectly there. If I line up with this corner, I'm not directly below this corner. This happens because of just cumulative tiny hairline mistakes, um, either within these corners connecting to the vanishing point or where I connected to the vanishing point. Usually I would say two out of three times I have students have that problem. And it's just because we're humans, we're not computers. This is why we use computer-aided design drawings for building plans now. So what I did was I just slightly missed the top corner and slightly missed the bottom corner, but I made sure that this line is perfectly vertical and parallel to all my other verticals because if it were crooked, it would really stand out. You would see it. So there you have your cube. You've got your horizon line up at the top. This is a bird's eye view. 
and this is your one point perspective. If you have a hard time seeing it, sometimes it helps to color code. You could put a colored line on the front. Um, I've got one of those someplace. I'll show it to you in another video. Um, so if that's challenging for you to see, I would say practice it a couple of different times. And then if you need to, color code it. And then check out my next video because I'm going to give you even more tips about one point perspective. Thank you all so much for watching. More videos are coming soon, so if you wish to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and do that. And also you can check out my website, lzmstudio.com.